Welcome everyone to chapter two of your linear algebra course, which is going to be on lines and planes in R3. So we're going to start in this video with section 2.1, which is lines in R3, and this video is going to do uh, subsection 2.1.1, a review of lines in R2, and example 2.1.1. So let's go ahead and get started. So the goal of section 2.1 is to be able to describe a line in three-dimensional space using either a vector equation, parametric equations, or symmetric equations. And to be able to achieve this goal, we're first going to review what we know about lines in two-dimensional space, in R2. And any line in R2 can be written in its general equation form, which you might remember from high school, was ax plus by plus c equals zero. All non-vertical lines can also be written in their slope-intercept form, which was y is equal to mx plus b. That's the form you probably used in your calculus class. In high school, you might have written y is equal to ax plus b, but we're going to use the m here, where the m was the slope of the line, and the point 0b is the y-intercept. And you might have used another name for that as well. Uh, that's sometimes also called the initial value. So if we look on our diagram, here is our initial value, our y-intercept 0b. And the slope, m, is given as delta y over delta x, which is the rise over the run, which, using our diagram here, if we look at our points that are given on the line, is calculated very often using the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I want to point something out here, and that is to give the equation of a line, it's sufficient to have two things, two things. And in our example, the two things that we had were a point on the line and the slope of the line. And when we go very shortly into giving the equation or equations of a line in R3, it is still going to be necessary to have two things. Now those two things are going to change a little bit, but needing two geometric things to give the equation of a line, that will, that will continue into three-dimensional space. So let's go ahead and look at example 2.1.1. And here this is asking us to consider the equation x plus y equals zero. Uh, notice I'm not told where yet to uh, consider this equation. Uh, next it says all points that satisfy this equation form what geometric object? And here I'm told to consider this first in two-dimensional space and then in three-dimensional space. And then we have to name and draw the object in each case. So in two-dimensional space, well, that's, that's something that you've done in your calculus class or in high school, right? If we have the line x plus y is equal to zero, that's given in general form. Well, let's just write this as y is equal to minus x. So minus x plus b, the b could be zero, right? So we have something going, a line going through the origin with a slope of minus one. So that is the line that bisects, whoops, that bisects the second and fourth quadrants. There's our line, uh, y is equal to minus x. So that should feel very familiar in R2. Now, what happens if we go over up into R3? Well, we can imagine embedding the xy plane into R3, right? If we take the axis, if we take our x-axis here, if we take our x-axis and embed it into R3, well, it's sitting right there. And if we embed the y-axis into R3, there's our y-axis. If we embed that, it's sitting right there. 
And so this line that we've drawn in R2 can also be embedded. It would be going through the xy plane, which would be right there. Now, if we take this, if we take this right in the xy plane, well, that's that's a place where z equals zero. That's where z equals zero. So what if we take this line and do the exact same thing, but where z is equal to one? So let's take that line and embed it now where z is equal to one. So everything looks exactly the same, except we're just up. We're just up one level in the z, and we can, I mean, there's no reason that we have to do that just for z equals 1. We can do that for z equals 2, and for z equals 3. Come on. For z equals 3, and there's no reason I can't do that also lower down. z is equal to minus 1, and so on and so forth. And so you might get the idea, right, this is, doesn't just have to be for integer values of z either all of these values all of these values in between of z will also have lines well maybe i should draw those lines like this right all filled out and so if we have lines stacked upon lines stacked upon lines then what is really being drawn out in r3 is a plane so a plane, like an infinite big, I have to draw it here as if it has boundaries, but it has no boundaries. These go on. These go on forever in all directions. A plane, like lines stacked up on each other, like an infinite sheet of paper. So whereas x plus y equals 0 gives us a line in R2, that same equation, that same equation is going to end up by giving us a plane in R3. So there's a little moral to this example, a little takeaway for you here. And that is the equation that you learned as the general equation of a line ax plus by plus c does not yield a line in R3, it yields a plane. And so we're going to see very shortly uh, in one of the next, in the next section actually, that the general equation of the plane, ax plus by plus cz plus d, is the general equation of the plane in R3. So that tells us what the equation of a line in R3 is not. It doesn't tell us what it is. And so we'll go... Uh, and generalize what we know from R2 into R3 in the next video.